Um, this is the Southern State of Mind session. You'll find some of the best colleges and universities in the country in the South. Um, in fact, some of the most ac academically challenging schools can be found in the South between Ivy Cover Walls, rich athletic traditions and rivalries and classic historical architecture. Southern schools reflect beauty and charm like no other. And we like to think everything's a little bit friendlier in the South too. Now you don't have to love football or rich Southern traditions in order to love Southern colleges. There are a few other things that you won't find anywhere else that make the South the ideal place to go to college. Today, we're going to take a closer look at why going to college in the South is an experience you'll never forget. And while we may be opponents on the field, we're definitely partners in education. We have five schools that have partnered today to help you understand the benefits of attending school in the South. I'm Beth Hodge, and I'm the Colorado Regional Recruiter for the University of Alabama, based in Castle Rock. Hey, y'all. I'm Ann Browning Wilson with Mississippi State University, located in Starkville, Mississippi. I'm Alex Dowell. I am with the University of Arkansas based in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hi, everyone. I'm Kylie Tepco. I am the Colorado Regional Representative for the University of Missouri, aka Mizzou. We are located in Columbia, Missouri. I'm regionally based in Denver, Colorado. Hey, y'all. I'm the other Kylie here today. I'm with the University of Tennessee, located in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I am also based here in Denver as the Colorado Regional. We're going to get started with just kind of giving you a geographical idea of, of course, we know what the South is, but what are some of the SEC schools that we're talking about today? And what's really great about the SEC is we're a division that's still very close geographically, but you're going to get a lot of diversity in that geography. So you're going to have the beaches and the oceans. You're also going to get mountains and rivers and forests and lakes and a little bit of everything. So regardless of what you're looking for, as far as the setting of what you might need as far as research and um, just general opportunities while you're on campus, you're going to be able to find that within the SEC and within the southeastern um, part of the United States. Like Kylie Rigdon just mentioned, our campuses are fairly close together geography and geography, but they are all kind of bringing something different to the table. But in terms of just an overall kind of theme with all of our campuses, they are all stunning. Um, you can see this, some of the examples of the beautiful architecture. Sometimes, you know, some of these pictures will be academic buildings on our campus. Some of them are featuring some of our amazing athletic facilities, but also something that all of our campuses have in common is just a classic college experience. When you see that college in the movies or when you kind of just picture, you know, close your eyes and picture what your college experience might look like. A lot of times you're probably picturing an SEC university. So on the next few slides, we're going to go over some kind of, again, more common themes that we all share um, and kind of what you could expect attending college in the South. Oh, awesome. Okay. Sorry. Thanks for changing the slide there. Awesome. So we've got um, kind of what we've put together a starter guide to attending college in the South. So we think, and you know, we're probably a little bit biased, that, but attending a Southern college is one of the most rewarding decisions you can make. So to go through a couple of things that we specifically love um, about a, our, a, our Southern college experiences. And the first is going to be fun campus traditions. I think that traditions are just synonymous with attending an SEC school. All of our schools have really long histories. Some of them are even amongst the oldest colleges in the United States. Shout out to the University of Tennessee. Um, from famous football cheers like Alabama's Rammer Jammer or Calling the Hogs at the University of Arkansas, which is literally trademarked and is one of the most recognizable chants in college football, um, to the fact that you can't think of a cowbell without thinking of Mississippi State. All, and then, you know, even I would say probably the ultimate, in my opinion, college and high school tradition, homecoming, is literally invented at the University of Missouri. So regardless of what SEC campus you attend, you know that you will have fun campus traditions from academics to social um, to honor to athletics. 
Another one of the pivotal parts of growing up in the South is the hospitality that I always experience. And so going to college in the South is no different. Within that, you're going to find welcoming, fantastic people who are going to be ridiculously friendly to you at all points. Um, if you're having a bad day, they're probably going to come up and ask you if you want some sweet tea. It's okay. It is literally an act of love. Um, and then also they're going to be there um, really just kind of being that polite person holding the door open for you, even if you're 30 feet away and you kind of feel like you do that awkward job. It's okay. That's how we are in the South. We're just really friendly people who just want um, to really just make everyone feel super welcome. And so that's the experience you get when you come to an SEC campus for the first time is you're going to feel welcome. Hopefully it feels like home for you. That's what you're looking for when you go to a college campus. Um, but really what we're going to do is make sure that when you're coming to our campus, you're not only coming as a prospective student, you're coming as hopefully a potential family member in the future. And so we're going to make sure that you have that welcoming, loving feeling when you get to our campuses. And what wouldn't be a part of uh, that welcoming, loving community in the South without amazing food? Um, I'm very fortunate that I'm from Missouri originally. My family, we moved to Arkansas, and then I married into a Louisiana family. So I get the full experience of uh, the Southern cooking and the Southern food. Um, and again, it's going to run the spectrum. There's all going to be kinds of great um, upscale restaurants throughout the towns in the SEC. But if you're thinking of kind of the classics, if you're thinking of barbecue, I mean, most of the states, if you were to look at any top 10 list about where the best barbecue in the country is from, it's going to be Missouri, Texas, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, these places that are, look, right here in the South where all these institutions are located. So uh, whatever style of barbecue you like, that's going to be represented at most of these colleges, um, and whether it's going to be like Dreamland in Alabama or Wrights in Fayetteville, uh, there's all kinds of great uh, tasty places to eat. That kind of food, if you love seafood, if you love Cajun cooking, um, crawfish boils, if you've never been to a crawfish boil and you never have, or you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, you'll get that experience going to one of these schools in the South um, for sure. And so uh, it's a great bonding experience. It's where you blend that hospitality with that uh, home cooking culture. Um, and so you're definitely going to enjoy the, the food experience. And with that too, like I mentioned, there is um, not just the Southern tradition uh, cooking when it comes to crawfish and catfish and all that good stuff with barbecue. Um, there's a great craft industry across many of the towns here. Um, so you think more of like um, craft industry as far as like coffee goes even. Uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, where I'm located, we have one of the nationally and globally recognized best coffee roasters um, in the world right now. And so um, it's a great uh, place to be a part of um, the SEC. You're definitely not gonna go uh, without great food and great beverages while you're here. And so that's something I think that makes a big part of where you live is what you get to enjoy eating. And so we don't want you to go hungry here in the SEC. Another component of coming to school in the South is that your weather may be a little bit different than you experience in Colorado. So those of you that are living out in the Western Slope, you probably have a lot of experience with snow and big mountains, but in the South, you're going to have a lot of options for different types of weather. So if you're still loving the cold, you might want to check out Missouri that still gets a regular snowfall. If you're missing the mountains, you definitely should look at maybe Knoxville, Tennessee, or the Ozark Mountains where Arkansas is located in Fayetteville, but we also have some really warm climate. So if you want to be close to the beach, Mississippi State and Alabama are just a short drive from the Gulf Coast. You're going to have those warm, humid summers, but really, really beautiful weather. And a lot of our schools are going to have all four seasons. So you're going to really have kind of an awesome experience while you're on campus, especially for those fall tailgates and spring baseball games. So um, definitely keep that in mind that it will be a little different than you're used to, but you're going to have a lot of kind of options when you look at schools in the South. Now we love our sports in the South. Southeastern Conference schools have long been known for their athletic success in championship teams. Mississippi State's baseball team and Alabama's football team won, both won national championships earlier this year. Tennessee's women's basketball team has won eight national titles and Missouri's cross country team has been known to outrun the competition. Arkansas's base basketball team has reached the postseason NCAA tournament every year except one since 2003. Southeastern Conference schools have also won national titles in gymnastics, softball, golf, tennis, swimming and diving, um, soccer, and even more sports. And in fact, Southeastern Conference schools have averaged almost seven national championships per year since 1990. And the rivalries aren't just one week in a year. You'll need to prepare yourself for 365 days of intense smack talk 
with some of the more intense rivalries. So now that we touched on, I think some of the things that maybe you you may have already known about the South or potentially you know could have guessed, we want to touch on what how we go a little bit deeper in terms of the college experience. So all of the SEC universities are leaders in academic research. Every single SEC school holds the very high research activity designation from Carnegie, which is the highest designation that you can hold. So we are all doing a lot means that research isn't just res reserved for graduate or professional students like it might be at a smaller school. Um, our undergraduates and sometimes even as earlier as freshman and sophomore year can get involved in research. Some really cool examples that I've seen recently. Um, one of the fastest supercomputers in the US is housed at Mississippi State. Um, Mizzou's research reactor is the largest U.S. producer of radioisotopes for diagnosing and treating cancer. And the University of Tennessee literally just discovered a new periodic element. So it's not just doing research on things that we know and, you know, just kind of helping you along with your classroom or educational experience. We are doing things that are contributing to advancing medicine and science and education. So, you know, no matter which SEC institution you might choose to attend, um, you will absolutely be involved in, I think, changing the world in a really cool academic way. And in the same note of changing the world and making an impact, we're going to be really um, involved in community service. And that's going to go beyond just our campuses and our local communities. That's going to go into the world as well. So the University of Arkansas has a student-led emergency food assistance program that goes towards helping those in urgent need. Several of our campuses have set up food banks, which started even before COVID to help um, kind of address that food insecurity that a lot of college students may face. And so within that, if there's something you're passionate about helping your community, you can take that from the Western Slope of Colorado and bring that to our campuses. And we're gonna help you foster ways to help our local communities and really get out um, within the campus and the city, and then also take that back out into the world as a whole and really start making a difference globally as well. And I think one of the most important things when you're considering going to an out of state school is going to be looking at cost. So a lot of people consider that schools out of state are going to be more expensive, but that's really not always the case. We have billions of dollars of scholarships that are offered through all of our universities, as well as federal programs that have grants and um, different opportunities for you. So I would really encourage you to consider these schools when looking. Um, some of our schools are going to have a residency program. So like the University of Missouri, you should ask them about um, becoming a resident of Missouri to lower your cost. Some are going to have um, really great percentage uh, off of your out of state. So Arkansas has the NRTA, which is a non-resident tuition assistance program. Mississippi State and Alabama and Tennessee all have amazing scholarships, especially if you're going to be high academic achieving, you're going to have some national merit opportunities, um, as well as things that are going to be like leadership and service. I would also encourage you to fill out the FAFSA. I know a lot of times students don't think that they're going to be eligible, but in this COVID year, there's a lot of assistance programs that are going to be available to students. So this is where you might find grants and work study opportunities. So definitely build those relationships with your admissions counselor to find out what kind of great scholarships and tuition programs you can have when you're going out of state. Studying, working, or interning abroad can be one of the highlights of your university career. All study abroad programs include academic credit, but the personal and professional growth that you experience will help you for the rest of your academic career and make you more competitive in today's globalizing marketplace. Our schools all offer numerous opportunities to enhance your education abroad, including study abroad, internships, research, service-based and faculty-led programs. Just a few examples of the programs you can do abroad are Arkansas students can participate in a 10-day study tour in Queensland, Australia during fall break where they will engage in a service learning experience that explores the history, culture, animals, and geography of that area. Mississippi State students can participate in a 10-week German language and internship program in Berlin. 
Tennessee offers summer theater programs in England, Ireland, and Scotland. University of Missouri students have traveled to Cape Town, South Africa to participate in field placements with local health organizations. And Alabama students can go on a research expedition to the waters of Antarctica even. And a part of what makes these types of great study abroad programs, uh, research opportunities across all these institutions great is the fact that we have fantastic award-winning faculty at all of our institutions across the SEC. Every year, the South that Southeastern Conference does recognize elite faculty from every institution, and every institution does get a faculty member of the year awarded through the SEC. And then from there, they even award an SEC faculty member of the year. Uh, this year, that award went to uh, Karen Woolley, Dr. Karen Woolley uh, from Texas A&M. And so she works in uh, chemistry, developing polymer research, and so really unique opportunities to get uh, to work alongside award-winning faculty, regardless of what your program is at University of Arkansas, at Tennessee, at Mississippi State, these other schools with these tier one research classifications. There are professors um, who are teaching you um, in the classroom, but then also doing research outside um, and applying for national fellowships and grants um, with the Guggenheim uh, Research Institute, with the National Science Foundation. And so the same way that you might, as a student, be competing for um, top research grants and opportunities and funding for scholarships. Uh, the faculty in the SEC are doing the same thing at their professional level and receiving those awards in competition with other elite universities across the country. And so uh, when you come here, um, whatever school you're going to in the SEC within your program, you're going to get to work alongside and learn alongside faculty who are really are on the cutting edge of their field of research um, and learning. So now that we've told you a little bit about what all of the SEC schools have in common, we are going to take a few minutes and each tell you a little bit about our individual institutions so that you can really see that there's going to be a distinct culture at each of our SEC schools as well. So I will get us kicked off. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Ann Browning Wilson. I am the Associate Director of Recruitment at Mississippi State. So if you ever have any questions, I am regional and I'm happy to help uh, answer those questions and work with you on the application process. Um, Mississippi State is a Division I SEC school located in Starkville, Mississippi. So Starkville is going to be a small historic college town, but we're going to be right in the middle of Memphis, Jackson, and Birmingham. So you've got three pretty big southern cities around you. We have a local airport that you can fly into with a free shuttle to campus. So you're going to kind of get that best of both worlds experience where you have that big SEC feel, but that real small historic college town experience as well. We have about 22,000 students at Mississippi State, and we are a 16 to 1 student to teacher ratio. And as you can see on this slide, we have over 180 majors and concentrations. So Mississippi State is a tier one research institution. We are a land, sea, and space grant school. So what that means is we're going to be most well known for programs like engineering. We have the only architecture program in the state of Mississippi. It is a five-year program with a separate application. We are one of 30 accredited vet schools and the largest vet school under one roof with an early entry program. So if students are interested, they can apply. It's competitive, but if you're admitted, it's guaranteed admission into our vet school. Um, lots of agriculture ranked in the top 10 in the country. Some really cool majors in forestry, business, education, arts and sciences. You're going to find some unique programs as well, like our broadcast and professional meteorology, as well as our PG golf management program, which is one of 18 in the country. So how do you become a bulldog? Coming to Mississippi State is pretty easy process. We offer rolling admission and you can apply online on our institutional app, the common app or the coalition application. It's a $40 application fee and then you'll send us your transcripts. This year we are test optional. However, if you have scores, I would encourage you to send them. We do a really amazing non-resident scholarship that can cover up to 100% of your out-of-state tuition, and those will be based on GPA and test scores. Um, once you're admitted, you'll be able to apply for housing, scholarships, our honors college, um, and it's a really great experience. So um, definitely consider applying 
applying to Mississippi State, apply early. And I would encourage you, if you've never been, schedule a visit. That's the best way to see if it's a good campus fit for you and kind of learn a little bit more about what makes Mississippi State unique. Thanks so much. Well, hi again, I'm Beth Hodge um, with the University of Alabama. I am the regional recruiter covering Colorado and I am based in Colorado full time. The University of Alabama is a large university. We've got just under 32,000 undergrads right now, about 38,000 total students. So we're going to bring you all the benefits and advantages of attending a large university, but at the same time, we keep that small campus, small community feel to us. About 60% of our classes have fewer than 30 students in them. About 40% have fewer than 20. So a lot of your classes on our campus could very well be smaller than what you have in high school right now. Um, another thing that lends itself to being that smaller campus feel is that Southern hospitality that we talked about earlier. And it really does go a long way to make that uh, large college campus feel like a much smaller community. As an out-of-state student, you're in the majority on our campus. Over 60% of our population, student population comes from outside the state of Alabama. So it really makes meeting people and getting involved really easy because there's so many people like you on campus. We um, are ranked number two in the country for internship placement. So we really encourage students to get that hands-on experience and, and in-depth experience outside the classroom too. We've got over 200 areas of study, about 70 of those are majors. Some of our most popular programs are business school, which is one of the top 30 undergraduate public business programs in the country. We've got one of the top four public relations departments in the country, well known for science, the sciences, psychology, criminal justice, and political science. And a couple of our new areas are cybersecurity and musical audio engineering, which is a partnership between the athletic or uh, the um, School of Music and College of Engineering, and it's the only kind of it's in the country. Next slide, please. So we really encourage students to get involved outside the classroom and um, make it easy for you to do that. We've got over 600 campus organizations covering social organizations, um, political organizations, theater and art, cultural organizations. We've got about 30 different clubs, sports, along with intramurals. Um, campus ministries. We do have the largest Greek system in the country. So if that's of interest, that's a way to build a good network of friends and a good support system really quickly on campus. We also have very generous scholarships that in many instances can make it just as affordable, if not more affordable to go out of state to Alabama than it is to stay in state in Colorado. Your application for admission will serve as your application for competitive scholarships this year. And there's some boxes on there that will take into account both academic and non-academic components, those non-academic components being your extracurriculars, leadership, achievements and honors, service and volunteer time, as well as work experience. So that is your place to brag on yourself because there's free money on that. We also have automatic merit scholarships that are based on uh, your GPA and test score. And those range from 8,000 a year for four years up to um, 28,000 a year for four years. We are located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is West Central Alabama. Right there in the heart of that picture, you can see our pride and joy, which is Bryant-Denny Football Stadium. Um, the, on the north side of campus, you have the Black Warrior River, which has walking and biking trails down there, lots of parks. You've got the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater, which backs up to the um, Black Warrior River, where they'll bring in big name performers throughout the year. You've got a lot of arts with the Bama Theater and other things in downtown Tuscaloosa and Ramajamas, which is one of our famous restaurants, that hole in the wall restaurant, but those are sometimes your best. And that's located right across the street from the stadium. So as Ann Browning said, your best way to kind of see if Alabama is going to be the right school for you is to visit campus. And if you get an opportunity to do that, let me know in advance and we'll be happy to plan a visit that's personalized to your individual interest. Have a great day and roll tide. Hey y'all, I'm changing the slides and forgot that I was right after Alabama. So here we are, um, it's Sunday. Um, so like I said earlier, my name is Kylie Rigdon. I am the Denver Regional Admissions Representative for the University of Tennessee. 
We are located in Knoxville. So what's gonna um, basically be the biggest selling points for that is we are located right in the heart of the Smoky Mountains. We are on the banks of the Tennessee River. We have a fantastic location for students who love outdoors, adventure, really anything that has to do with same outdoor activities that um, a lot of the students in Colorado are familiar with. You're gonna be able to take those and bring them to Tennessee with you. We also have one of the top five outdoor programs in the country because of our location. So students who maybe like kayaking or camping, but don't wanna bring that equipment with them, can also um, find that equipment on campus, loan it out similar to a library, but for outdoor activities stuff. And within that, um, go and do those adventures without having to also keep all of the stuff in their residence halls, which as we probably remember, or if you've ever been in one, no, they're not that big. So we're gonna have that easily accessible on campus. Also within the city of Knoxville, we are the third largest city in the state of Tennessee. So we're gonna be about the size of a Fort Collins, lots of different things to do in the city, still going to be a really active campus as well. So it's really hard to be bored when you're a student um, at the University of Tennessee. Within the campus itself, we have 25,000 undergraduate students. So among the group today, we're kind of that medium-sized SEC school. We do have all 50 states represented. And as of this year, we have 25% um, of our students coming from out of state, which is huge. Our freshman class has 38%. And so we're seeing that number grow each and every year. Within our academic world, we offer 360 different majors. So because we're landlocked, we don't have marine biology. That's basically the only thing I guarantee you that we can't um, offer. Other than that, we're gonna have nine different colleges that it's gonna include agriculture, engineering, business, health sciences, um, social work, nursing, which is a direct entry competitive major program with no additional essay anymore. So that's brand new for this year. We're also going to offer your general arts and sciences to so all the pre-meds, pre-laws, all of the pre-professional programs. We are home to the law school on our campus, as well as the vet school. And then within the University of Tennessee system, we do have a med school as well. Also within our student life, 600 organizations. So students are really going to have a lot of different opportunities to take that 25,000 student population, bring that down to a manageable size, find that community, find that sense of self among people who are going to believe the same things you do, enjoy the same things, all that kind of great stuff. Also within our student life, that's gonna include everything from your very general, should be able to find on a large campus, such as student association, different campus events, as well as Greek life. But we're also gonna have some pretty unique things like chilling and grilling club, where they basically just hang out in hammocks, they eat, they talk about whatever's happening, whatever they feel like talking about for the day. Um, Oreo of the month club, apparently there are 12 different types of Oreos um, at least. And so within that, you're gonna be able to find something um, on campus that's really gonna speak to you and make you feel like you are a part of that community among that larger crowd. It is really easy to take a big university and make it feel small. And we wanna make sure that we provide those opportunities for students to do that. And then within our um, campus self, you are going to have lots of different ways to apply. So we have our general application online. We're also going to offer um, the application through the Common App, November 1st is an early action deadline, so students who apply by that date will have access to competitive scholarships as well as merit-based aid and will receive their admissions decision in mid-December along with their merit-based aid decision. Students who apply by December 15th will still qualify for merit-based aid and receive that decision um, as well as their admissions decision in mid-February. As everyone else has already said, and I think as we all know, going to a campus is going to be the best way to experience that actual campus feel. And so while you're on campus, you can do a very traditional campus tour. You can add in some academic department opportunities, speak with different um, students on campus. And there are also ways to engage um, through our virtual options, such as virtual open houses, as well as our virtual tour. And students who are really looking to get connected, we also have um, Unibuddy, which is gonna allow you to talk to students either from Colorado. We do have a student ambassador from the Western Slope. She is a sophomore this year, so we're really excited for that, and then within that, you can talk to students within individual majors that might interest you as well. Going through the scholarship process, merit-based aid is available for both test-inclusive and test-optional students. And well, uh, all of our competitive scholarships are going to be test-optional inclusive as well. So you do not have to have tests for any part of the process. However, we are accepting test scores through June's test dates, and we need to have scores in hand by July 1st of 2022 for seniors. I cannot promise the same thing for our juniors, so we'll say December for now, and maybe that'll change. That being said, you can start out test optional, add your test scores at any point throughout the process. If you choose to do that, that's totally fine, but if you start out test, op, uh, test inclusive, you have to stay that way. Within our competitive aid, those are going to be 
kind of a wide variety of major and university wide type things. And those all decisions go out in the spring. So you kind of have a general financial aid picture by that mid March timeframe. If you have any questions, I am the local rep. You can set up a one on one meeting with me. You can also feel free to call, text, or email that number if you just have a one off question. And like I said, Visiting campus is going to be the best way. So if you have questions about when and how to get to campus, let me know. It is an easy direct flight from Denver to um, Knoxville. You can also fly pretty much from any other um, city in the U.S. to get to Knoxville. Just maybe a little bit of a layover somewhere um, in the Midwest. So than that, thank you all so much and go Vols. All righty, it is my turn. Once again, my name is Alex Dow. I'm the Assistant Director for New Student Orientation and Recruitment here based in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the home of the University of Arkansas. Uh, we are the land grant flagship institution for the university or for the state of Arkansas. Um, if you can tell by this math here, quick on your feet, 1871 is when we were established. This is our 150th year of existence. So we've been having a lot of fun so far this fall, uh, back to in-person classes and having uh, students celebrating our 150 years as an institution. Uh, we are, um, with our record enrollment this year, over 29,000 29, students enrolled. That is all programs, including uh, graduate and doctoral programs. So if you're looking at on-campus undergrads, we're right around 24,000. They're going to be uh, dispersed across six academic colleges with over 85 undergraduate majors. It's going to be things like uh, the College of Business, which includes marketing, finance, accounting, even uh, data science now. Um, there's going to be a School of Architecture and Design. There's going to be a College of Engineering with nine different engineering emphasis. Uh, the Bumpers College of Food, Agriculture, and Life Science, a College of Education and Health Professions, and then a traditional College of Arts and Sciences, which houses our pre-professional programs like pre-med, pre-law, pre-dental, etc. What's great about the University of Arkansas is we are open admit to any college on our campus. And so when you apply uh, for admission to the university and are admitted, you are automatically admitted into the college that your major program corresponds to. Um, with our growth and with our uh, rapid um, development as an institution, especially over the last two decades, we are still maintaining a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So similar to what some of the other representatives at, representatives at some of these other schools have mentioned, uh, think 30 to 40 students per class on average. I think 90% of our classes right now still keep fewer than 50 students in them. And so uh, there might be a few large lecture halls on our campus, but that's not going to be the majority of your classes that you're going to be taking. Um, and even so, we're going to have student resources available to you um, through tutoring and supplemental instruction which will make those large class sizes even smaller and more accessible to you. 400 student organizations to be a part of right now on our campus. About 34 of those are going to be Greek life, so fraternities and sororities. It's about one in every three students on our campus is Greek. So about 30% of the student population is a part of that. But uh, like some of the others have mentioned, um, if you're interested in other things like club sports, intramural sports, book clubs, esports, and gaming clubs, we've got that all. Uh, our unique one, it's not an Oreo club. Uh, we have a chicken nugget club. We have a group of students who get together, uh, call themselves Tour de Nugget, and go eat chicken nuggets at different restaurants throughout Fayetteville and Northwest Arkansas. And so uh, plenty uh, to get involved in and be a part of as a student here. We are obviously the home of the Razorbacks. Uh, I'd say there's many lions, tigers, and bears, but only one hog in college sports. And so uh, we are the premier athletic institution in the state. Um, and since there's no professional sports in Arkansas, uh, everyone looks to call on those hogs. Um, and that's the pride of our athletics here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, one tradition that I do want to highlight here on this page, it says uh, over 200,000 graduates on Senior Walk. That photo right there below emphasizes what Senior Walk looks like. Every single person who has passed through the halls of the University of Arkansas has, has, their, has their name etched into our sidewalks on campus. Uh, the first class of 1876, which is nine students, uh, their names are listed right there near the front steps of that building picture there, Old Main. And then five miles of campus um, house the sidewalk or house the names on these sidewalks. And so I've been told we have enough space until the year 2040 to keep putting names on senior walk on our campus until we have to get creative. Perhaps we'll make more sidewalk space. Perhaps we'll stretch more into the city of Fayetteville. Um, but by 2040, that should be enough time if you want to come to the U of A to get a bachelor's degree and have your name etched into senior walk. And so that's a really unique tradition. We're one of the few institutions that carry on a tradition like this for this long, uh, both in miles and in years. We do next slide. Uh, a little bit more on some of the opportunities um, for campus. Uh, Fayetteville itself, too, I'll touch a little bit more on this later, is um, in the northwest corner of Arkansas. We're about an hour and a half from Tulsa. It's about a 12-hour drive to the Front Range um, from Fayetteville. I know I just made it the other day. Um, it's uh, it's a not too bad of a, of a drive. You just have to uh, pass through some uh, some I-70, um, but really it's a it's a not too bad of a, of a commute. Um, to get to Denver, at least, um, there is a direct flight from Fayetteville to Denver as well. 
um, if you are looking to get to the Front Range um, from the Western Slopes, um, and then a quick um, about two and a half hour flight from Denver to Fayetteville. And so, uh, but again, great place to live. I'll talk more about that in a little bit with over four, 300 Fortune 500 companies in the region. Uh, a certain company that you've probably heard of before is located in Northwest Arkansas. It's called Walmart. Uh, they got started in Bentonville, which is just 30 minutes up the road um, from Fayetteville. And so with them being placed here in Northwest Arkansas, there is a growing economic region uh, with over 300 Fortune 500 companies. The only other place you're going to go in the U.S. that's going to have more Fortune 500s in one place is Manhattan. And so many of these companies and corporations, along with the subsidiary corporations and companies that exist to support the infrastructure of Northwest Arkansas, know they have a natural pipeline of talent here at the university. So that's going to mean internship opportunities aplenty. That's going to mean um, job opportunities after graduation. Don't worry, not everyone goes to work for Walmart, if you're not interested in that at all, I think out of our 1500 graduates from the Walton College of Business last year, only 17 of them went to work for Walmart. And so uh, there are plenty of other job opportunities and we can send you pretty much anywhere for internships um, across the country and across the world. Uh, being a part of any of these programs, coming in as a high school student, um, this was alluded to earlier, I believe it was Ann Browning mentioned the NRTA, the Non-Resident Tuition Award. Living in Colorado, you have an opportunity to receive an 80% or 50% discount on your out-of-state tuition automatically just by applying for admission. Uh, we do that based off of GPA standards, and so uh, when you submit your application for admission, we'll uh, calculate your GPA. And if you qualify with certain GPAs that you're going to receive either a 50% discount, which is going to be about $8,500 a year um, in automatic scholarship savings, um, or an 80% discount, which is going to be a little over $13,000 a year in tuition savings. So your tuition begins to from the, from the start, look a little bit more like in-state tuition. And then there are additional merit-based scholarships you can apply for on top of that. Um, we ask that you apply for admission to the University of Arkansas no later um, than November 1st. That is our priority deadline. That's to get you into the front of the line for the merit-based scholarship application, which is due November 15th. So you can apply for admission via the Common App or through our in-house application at apply.uark.edu. Uh, but once you um, apply, you'll get that uh, if you meet the GPA standards, um, that out-of-state tuition discount automatically, and then you can apply for additional merit-based scholarships, which range anywhere from $2,000 annually up to $18,000 annually. Uh, we are test optional, um, like some of the other schools mentioned, similarly for admission up front, but I'm going to recommend you send us an ACT or an SAT because that will make you as competitive as possible for these additional merit-based scholarships. So again, November 1st for admission and November 15th for scholarships. Those are the two key dates I want you to keep in mind if you're considering the University of Arkansas at all. Uh, last slide. And so I just, again, wanted to highlight what it's like living here in Fayetteville. Um, we're about 90,000 people um, in the city of Fayetteville. So, uh, you know, mid-sized um, to small size uh, city. Um, but if you take the whole region um, into play um, from Bentonville, which is again, 30 minutes north, all the way down to Fayetteville, down this north to south corridor on Interstate 49, there's about 500,000 people um, in a four city region with some some existing uh, towns around it that kind of everybody lives in. And so the region is expected to grow to over a million people by 2040. And so we are in a place that is fast becoming one of the metro hubs of um, the United States growing. And again, part of that is the infrastructure with, with Walmart, the industry that's available. Um, and then there's just so much to do. Um, obviously, with the university in town, you get to enjoy all the SEC athletics. We do have a minor league baseball team 10 minutes up the road in Springdale, Arkansas. If you enjoy um, semi-professional sports, uh, there is some great hiking. Similar to uh, the, the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, we have the Ozark Mountains and the Washita Mountains not too far away. Um, if you want to do backpacking or kayaking on the Buffalo Nona Buffalo National River or the Kings River. There's some great rivers nearby. Um, Bentonville, where uh, Walmart is located, was ranked the number one mountain biking city in America right now. And so um, there's going to be lots to do, um, but then we have great farmers markets throughout all four of our major cities in the area. Um, we've got great food and beverage culture, and so lots to be a part of here in Northwest Arkansas. And so we'd love for you to schedule a visit um, and come sometime this year to check us out and uh, see what makes Fayetteville our favorite bill. All right, and to wrap things up, um, again, Kylie Tetko from the University of Missouri, AKA Mizzou. Um, we are the largest university in the state of Missouri. So very similar to the University of Arkansas, we are both the land grant um, and the flagship university for the state of Missouri. So right about 30,000 total students, 23,000 of those will be our undergraduates. And then 
We've got about seven to 8,000 in a given year graduate and professional students. We are one of six universities in the country to have a law school, vet school, and med school all on one campus. So we do have a lot of students coming again to pursue a degree higher than a bachelor's degree. To go along with those 30,000 students, we have 300 degree programs on campus. I'll go over some more pop some of our more popular ones on the next slide, but just kind of wanted to point out that even though we are a large university, um, that kind of the amount of majors that we offer keeps our students pretty spread out in their in their actual programs. So we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio and 80% of our classes will hold fewer than 30 students. So it will be a little bit more similar to high school, um, but you'll just benefit from being on a large campus with, again, all of those different major options and then 600 different student organizations. Very similar to a lot of my other SEC colleagues, we do have a large Greek system on campus. About 29% of our campus is Greek. Um, we have 50 different club and rec sports. We have multiple service-based organizations, religious organizations. Um, so just to give you kind of an example of where I was coming from, I actually grew up here in Colorado, um, down in Colorado Springs, was really looking for just a great out-of-state option. And um, I'll kind of go over some of the reasons why I chose Mizzou. The first was because of all of these different opportunities on campus. I knew I wanted to go to a big school. I was a little bit nervous about the class size, but I just thought it would be great to have all of the different opportunities when it came to academics, extracurriculars. So I was a journalism and a Spanish major. I ended up double majoring with, which about a quarter of our students do. And then about half of our students will combine a major and a minor. So I minored in business. Um, and then about 10% of our students will join the Honors College, which is something I was involved in as well. Um, I did join a sorority and a lot of community service organizations on campus. And then I also love going to sports games. So we, again, as everyone else here, we're a member of the SEC. We've got 20 division one sports on campus. So just kind of by the numbers, Mizzou was a good fit. Actually, if you can go back to the last slide, the one last thing um, I wanted to talk about that kind of you know initially put Mizzou on the map for me was also the college town where we're located. So we're located in Columbia, Missouri, which is the fourth largest city in Missouri, right about 125,000 people right now. We were ranked one of the top five college towns in the US by Sports Illustrated the last time they did their rankings, which was two years ago in 2019. So we're definitely kind of on the map in terms of just like amazing college towns in the country. That ranking put us above Boulder actually. So definitely it's, it's a college town through and through everywhere you go, you'll see Mizzou spirit, but we're also big enough that you don't feel like you're stuck in the middle of nowhere we have an airport that you can fly direct to Denver from, you know, Columbia Mall, Target, nine Starbucks in town, everything like that. Um, we will go back to the next slide. So on the next slide. Um, oh, that go? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you're good. No worries. Sorry, just made me lose my train of thought. And I was like, oh, it's me. No worries. All right. So. Again, just kind of from the outside, I thought Columbia seemed like a great fit. I was a journalism major. So on this next slide, we'll talk about some of our academic programs that students tend to come to Mizzou specifically for. The most popular major from all of our out-of-state kind of students, which represents about 40% of Mizzou students, is going to be journalism. We have 30 different journalism majors. We're the number one school of journalism in the world in terms of when we started and in terms of ranking most years. So definitely if you're thinking about any sort of communication, sports journalism, social media, PR and advertising, definitely put Mizzou on your list. We have six hospitals on campus and then five different clinics right now that our health profession students work in. So whether you are a nursing major, pre-med, health science, PT, OT, that's gonna be a great fit at Mizzou because again, our medical campus is on our main campus. So right by the rec center, we've got all the hospitals and everything. For business, 100% internship rate and actually 98% job placement rate last year, even in COVID, we were really excited about that. Um, 15 different types of engineering, they're all making amazing money outside of school, so I always love putting that average starting salary on there. And then again, we do have a vet school on campus, so animal science is very popular. Um, but regardless of what academic major you choose, and actually our fourth most popular major every year is going to be undecided because students are just falling in love with Mizzou in general, we have a 90% retention rate from freshman to sophomore year. So that means that students are happy on campus, they want to come back for sophomore year, um, and they're also being academically successful. 
And then just to wrap up, we want to talk about, again, kind of the, the last thing that kind of sealed the deal for me as a student from Colorado, trying to decide if I could afford to go out of state to Missouri. I chose Mizzou because it was cheaper than staying in state in Colorado, and that's the case for the majority of the students that I recruit every year. So whether you are potentially able to apply for our full ride scholarship, which is called the Stamp Scholarship, if you're a member of the Honors College, you get some other kind of merit scholarship, or you go through a residency program like Ann Browning talked about earlier, Mizzou will typically be one of your more affordable out-of-state options at a large flagship university. So um, just to quickly go over the Missouri residency process, basically you can earn in-state tuition during your freshman year, and that's typically only possible in Missouri and Utah as a Colorado student. And then just to kind of point out the um, kind of relationship that Missouri and Colorado have, the Rocky Mountain Tigers is our second largest out-of-state alumni chapter, and they raise money every year just to support Colorado students who are applying to Mizzou through, um, they actually awarded $15,000 in scholarships last year. Um, so wanted to kind of point out that, you know, Mizzou is, um, Colorado is a top five feeder state into Mizzou, but also a top five destination for Mizzou graduates. Um, and we will be the closest SEC school to Colorado. So um, just a bit of a jaunt down I-70, but we're only located about two miles south of I-70. I live here in Denver. I travel to the Western Slope option. So um, often, so please let me know if you, Ever want to meet up for coffee and I'd love to share my Mizzou experience with you. So we'll open it up for just one or two quick questions. And we'd like for you to keep those questions general to, you know, going to school in the South. If you have anything specific to one of our universities, then please, please reach out to us directly. We will all be attending the college fair portion after this. Yes. So definitely pop pop into our Zoom rooms. We'd love to chat with you. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate you joining us today and have a enjoy your time at the fair, meeting with other schools, more well, different schools. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for being here.